Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you the First Lady of Suspense, Miss Agnes Moorhead, in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the terrifying story of a double murder and the woman who became involved in this criminal activity. Weekend special, Death. Our star, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Hey, Stan, what's baseball's brainiest manager doing out here? Ah, it's my battery, Harlow. It struck out due to no water. Well, you should have an Autolite Stay Full battery, Stan. That's the perfect power pitcher that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Sounds like a real major league, Hollow. Ah, it sure is. The Autolite Stay Full bats a thousand, season after season, thanks to fiberglass retaining mats around every positive plate. They reduce shedding and flaking to give the Autolite Stay Full longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Drop me off at the nearest Autolite battery dealer, will you, Hollow? Sure, Stan. He'll fix you up with an Autolite Stay Full, the battery that says right on the case. Needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Remember, Stan, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Miss Agnes Moorhead in Weekend Special Death. Hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Who is Franz? I am. I'm Lee Stanley. Oh. What is all this? Well, maybe you can help us, Mr. Stanley. The woman says she works for you. Rita, she certainly does work for me. She's worked for me for two years or more. Why are you holding her? Uh, What does she do for you? My secretary. Look, if I can't get any answers from you, I'd just as soon call Captain Hilliard at home. I understand you're an attorney, Mr. Stanley. I am. Right now, you might consider that she's my client, and I want to see her. I'm warning you, Franz, I won't tolerate any irregularities. You're holding her, and I have a right to see her. Come on. I'll be in 201 for a couple of minutes. Okay, Lieutenant. We got her down the hall here, Mr. Stanley. Booked yet? Not yet. When we picked her up and tried to get some information from her, she just gave us her name and address and asked us to call you. That's all we know, except, of course, the two guys she was with. Excuse Two men? Yep. Well, where are they? Are you holding them? Sort of. What do you mean? They're dead. Yeah, Mr. Stanley, your secretary killed them. In there. Well, go ahead, Mr. Stanley. She's waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. Please? Lee, is that you? Yeah. Oh, Lee. <laughs> this isn't a very nice way to spend a Sunday morning, is it? No, no. Hi. Hi. We, we. <laughs> we have. Oh, what is it? Tell me. Lee, it was... It was one of those silly things, just one of the silliest things that could possibly happen. Two men are dead, Rita. I know, but, Lee, I've heard you say it many times. You've even said it to me. If you're arrested and taken into custody, just give your name and address and ask for your lawyer. You say that to people all the time. You've said it many times. I've heard you. I've heard you. I know. <laughs> you did right. Well, I asked for you. I wanted to tell you. I never thought I'd be... Lee, it was so silly, so... So very silly. Coffee was 92 cents a pound, and they had a special on steak, $1.15 for T-bones, and there were some bakery goods. What? The weekend specials. Well, yesterday afternoon, in the office, I was making out my list for the week. Oh. And I was getting my list ready. I was going to stop in the market on my way home. Potatoes, carrots, oh. Some lettuce in here. Radishes. Celery. Elmwood, four, eight, three, two, one. Mr. Stanley is in the office right now. Is there any message? Yes, I'll tell him. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Hello. Oh, hello. 
My name is Tony LaFerro. Is Mr. Stanley in? Oh, hello, Mr. LaFerro. I've heard Mr. Stanley speak of you. I'm Miss Dorsey, Mr. Stanley's secretary. I'm sorry he isn't in right now, but he's due back any minute. Then I'd like to wait for him. Yes, of course. Take a chair over there. Sure. Thanks. Didn't know whether anybody would be here or not. Saturday afternoon and all. I was going to call him at home if I didn't get him here. Well, we're usually not here on Saturday afternoons. But Mr. Stanley had to be in court this morning, and then he had to attend a luncheon. I see. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? That's well. Not for me. Then. Oh? When you said you'd heard Mr. Stanley speak of me, you mean that you know about the trouble on me. Well, I'm sure Mr. Stanley will be able to help you, Mr. LaFaro. Otherwise, he wouldn't be handling the case. I just don't understand how people can be that way. I didn't take that car. It was mine. It belonged to us, me and my wife. I had a right to sell it, and how she can charge me with theft, I don't know. I can't understand any of these things. Well, my fifth. Hello, Tony. Mr. Stanley. What's up now? My wife's back in this country. She's going to throw some more charges at me. That's right. I received a letter this morning. I'm out on bail now, winning my trial on that other thing, and they put me back in. You better come in my office. I brought those receipts and fill a sale on the car that you asked me to find. Good. All right, if I leave now, Mr. Stanley? Uh, go on in, Tony. I'll be in a minute. Make yourself comfortable. Sure. Rita, uh, having plans this afternoon? I want to get my shopping done. Why? Well, I hate to ask this. It's such a swell afternoon and all, but he's in more trouble than he knows. There are two new warrants against him for grand theft. I want some information before they're executed, if possible. I'll need you. Oh, Lee. I'm sorry. These things happen now and then. Well, I'll get my book. I was going to play golf, if it helps you any. Well, it doesn't. You know something? What? That mild, sweet little man, he's so polite and gentle. How could he get into all this trouble? Because that mild, sweet little man is a liar and a thief, and they usually get into trouble. Oh, you're all... If he had a gun, he'd as soon blow your head off as look at you. Sorry I ever took him on as a client. Well, let's get started. Anthony and LaFerro was so quiet and soft, and when he looked at me with those big brown Latin eyes while I was taking notes, I, I knew how wrong everything had been for him. You, you as usual, were all lawyer. He'd talk and you'd tell him he was lying and make him tell it to you another way. It was all so involved. Something about him stealing a car from his divorced wife and her being in England. Oh, I don't know. I just took notes. Six. Well... That's enough for now. Where are you staying? The motel. You go back there right now and stay there. I'll call you Monday morning after I talk to Judge Presley. But I'm going to tell you one thing. This is going to cost you money. Oh, don't worry. I, I can pay. Thank you for your time. Sure. Good night. Good night. And good night, Miss Dawson. Good night. Sorry I messed up your afternoon. Oh, it's all right. Oh. <clears throat> Where's my coat? There. Oh. What about these? Well, they have to be typed up. Of when? I'll need them first thing Monday when I talk to the judge. When can you do them? I better do them right now, Lee. Oh, you're tired. Well, I'm busy tomorrow, and I don't want to take them home. I think I'll just stay here and get them out right now. Well, thanks. I better be getting along. You as well. Just a minute. Hmm? I have to go shopping before the store is closed tonight. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here's your check. Thanks. I'm flat broke. See you Monday. Night, boss. Night. You were swell to stay with you. Well, it took me until 8.30 to type up the notes. And after that, I drove straight to Jack's Market. It's about two blocks from my apartment. I wanted to cash my check, get the groceries, and go home. My idea was to have a little something to eat and get to bed early. Well, it didn't work out that way. Wait! Hey! Wait, please! Huh? Oh, thank you. 
Thank you. You, you aren't closed, are you? Afraid we are, miss. It's five after nine now. Oh, there's still some people in there. I can see them. Well, they got here before nine. Well, what time is it now? Five after. Oh, I haven't got a thing in the house to eat. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to let any more customers in after nine. That's why they put me here. Oh, dear. There's just nothing in the house at all for dinner. I'm sorry. We're open from ten to six tomorrow. Could you come back then? Yes, of course. But what about now, tonight? What do you want? Well, I could get by with a little steak. Well, just something for now. I just got off work well, and I... I'm looking now. You go ahead. Oh, thank but you. Don't say anything to anybody. It'll be my neck. Just pretend you got here before now. I got you. Go that way. As long as I did get in and I decided I'd do all of my shopping. It wouldn't hurt anybody if I was just a little late. You know how it is in a store. You wheel back and forth looking for what you want. At least I do. And that's what I did there. I was way in the back of the store and I didn't notice it when they turned off the overhead fans. And I didn't notice that there wasn't anybody front at the cash register. But I did notice it when all the lights suddenly went out. Hey! Hey! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, you! Mister! Hey! Hey! Oh, well, I'll be darned. I'm locked in! This was a Jack's Market. You know how they are. Always built in from the street so that you can park on any side. Well, that's fine when you want to park, but when you're locked inside at night and you want to get somebody's attention so you can get out, it isn't so fine at all. As a matter of fact, it's terrible. After a few minutes, I went to the hardware counter and got a flashlight and waved it for a half an hour, and when nobody saw it or paid any attention to it, I got worried. I was more worried when I got in the phone booth and found out I didn't have anything but a check. And I couldn't open any of the cash registers or the door to the little office in the back. I want you to know things got a little worse about two in the morning. After I'd settled for a pint of milk and a piece of cheese and stretched out with a sack of flour for a pillow. Something, something woke me up. Something near the side entrance. Okay, I'm grounded. Let's go. No, wait here till I get set up. Keep an eye open. Here, take this. Nobody shows their face. You. One of them, the bigger one, went to the little office carrying a load of tools with him. But he didn't worry me, but the other one, the one in the white overalls and the hat worried me a lot. He didn't see me, but I saw him. Your client, Lee, the liar and the thief would as soon blow your head off as look at you. His name was LaFaro, and this time he had a gun in his hand. Autolite is bringing you Miss Agnes Moorhead in Weekend Special Death. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, Harlow, I signed up an Autolite Stay Full battery. Ah, smart move, Stan. You got yourself a real pennant winner. With that great battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use? And they tell me that Autolite Stay Full has a life that's longer than an umpire's face, Hollow. <laughs> yes, sir, Stan. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give the Autolite Stay Full longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. The Autolite Stay Full really makes a hit with me, Harlow. And with everybody who wants a battery with pep, Power and peak performance every time. 
Friends, visit your Autolite battery dealer. He services all makes of batteries, and if you need a new battery, he has the Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Agnes Moorhead in Elliot Lewis's production of Weekend Special Death. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. When I was in high school, I went with a boy named Rudy. After school, he worked at a filling station with a pay telephone booth in it. And when Rudy wanted to call me, and nickels were very scarce in those days, he had a way of making a call without any money. I remembered Rudy, bless his heart, married five children, and I certainly had a call to make. Well, two men were drilling holes in a safe. One of them had a gun, and I was locked in a supermarket with them, and I wanted to tell somebody. Well, I took off my shoes and got myself up to the telephone booth. I left the door open so the light wouldn't go on. And then I went to work the way Rudy showed me. And I must have done something right. Good old Rudy. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody there? Hello? Oh, please. Hello? This is the special operator. Oh. Oh, hello? This is the special operator. Hello? This is the special operator. Are you having difficulty? Oh, I certainly am. You'll have to speak louder. I can't hear you clearly. I'm in trouble. I'm locked I'm in I'm sorry, Jackson. miss. I can't hear you. I can't talk any louder. What is it, miss? I'm in trouble. I'm locked in a supermarket. There are two men here trying to open the safe. Well, this connection's very bad. What number are you calling That doesn't make any difference. I, I have to know your number before I can help you. Well, it's, it's Evergreen 50972. What number are you calling from? It's Evergreen 50972. Now listen to me. I want you to get the police over here, right? Very bad, miss. You hang up. I'll oh, call I... you right back. See if I can make a problem. No, don't, don't, don't hang up. No, no. Oh, oh. Hey. What? Oh, that sounds like a phone's off the hook. What is this one? There's a phone up in that part of the store, isn't it? Yeah. Let's take a look. What's oh, funny? What now? Stop, just like that. Well, let's take ourselves a look. If you heard a phone off the hook, it wasn't this one. Look. Yeah, I guess I'm getting old or something. Any other phones in this place? Just this one and the one in the office. You told me that. Yeah. Besides, how would a phone get off the hook by itself? I don't know. How would it? You may be getting old at that. I'm not too old to take you in on a job so you can get some money to get yourself out of a jam. Oh, you old guys, give me a penny. Ah. I was behind the post-toasty display, I think. They were about ten feet from me. As long as I just saw them and they didn't see me, I was happy. I was willing to let them rob the safe. I was willing to stay in the store all night. I was willing to do anything as long as I didn't get hurt. Uh oh <gasps> What are you going to do? I'm going to answer. Well, a minute ago, that was a minute ago. This is now. Well, look, you can just let it go and it'll stop ringing. Who calls a pay booth this time of night? The wrong number, you know that. And I'll tell whoever it is if we've got the wrong number. Hello. Special operator? Yeah. Is this Evergreen 50972? No. No, no. No, I'm. Sorry, no one could possibly have called from here in the last five hours. I'm the night watchman. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Fred? Yeah? Somebody in here. I'm trying to use that phone two minutes ago. Dang. Dang? Yeah. All right, come out, wherever you're hiding. Hey, you crazy suppose she's got a gun. If he did, she'd have used it by now. Come out, come out! Take that aisle, I'll take this one. All right, Tom. Huh? 
There was one advantage. I knew they could have used a flashlight and nobody on the street would have seen it, but they didn't know that. So it all went on in the dark. The chase, I mean. I crawled, they walked, I slithered, they, they crept. There was one point when I was near the soup counter and they were off in the vegetable market. I thought I was safe. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Come on, get out. <laughs> Bring her back to the office where we can use her. Life. Come on, you. All right, take it easy, take it Turning easy. All that stuff, that's real tough. Ah! Come on, shut up. All right, get the door. Yeah. Hi. This is Dorsey, isn't it? Oh, you, you know her? Yeah. And I works for my lawyer. Oh, oh, swear. How'd you get in here? Well, come on, can't you talk? I... I was locked in by mistake when they closed the store. I was locked in. You said that. I didn't have any change. I couldn't call anyone. No? No! I didn't want to be here. I don't care if you rob this store. I don't care what you do. I don't tell anybody. That's so. Yes, yes. Just let me go. I won't. But get... you did make one call. I'm locked in a supermarket. There are two men here. That's about the way it went with the operator, isn't it? You're kind of nice in a certain light. I said that to myself this afternoon. <laughs> kind of nice. Stanley says I lie all the time, doesn't he? I've never discussed you with Mr. Stanley. What are we going to do? Huh? I said, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to finish the job. I need some money. Hey, what about her? She's seen both of us. She can pick us out of a show-up mug pile. I got two losses already, and so are you. I know. Well, what are we going to do? Relax. She isn't going to say anything or pick out our pictures. Huh? No. We'll kill her, Fred. He wasn't lying then, Lee. Not one bit. I knew that. I knew it the minute he looked at me. He told me to sit down on the floor facing the wall. Well, I did, expecting a bullet in my back any minute. Instead, I had to sit like that while they went to work on the safe again. Come on, hurry it up. Hurry it up, will you? Go on as fast as I can. Don't open one of these things in 15 seconds, you know. I'm doing my best. Ow, lousy. We pushed it too hard. That's why it broke. Well, you're pushing me too hard. Get it open. We haven't got all night. Just a second. Uh, you, uh, ever seen a safe crack before? Hey, you. No. No, I haven't. <laughs> Pretty interesting, huh? Hmm? How are we doing? It's close. Just a little bit here now. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, try it. Okay. <clears throat> no, no, not yet. Well, it should be. Well, I tell you. Ah. Yeah. Ah. All right, let's get loaded up and get out of here. Miss Dorsey, that's a very interesting project. Cracking a safe. Yes, I'm sure it is. Oh, knock it off. How much you make a week? Sixty dollars. Sixty a week, huh? Tell me you know how much I'm making this week for. Two hours' work, do you? No. I'm making... <laughs> well, I haven't got time to count it now. Okay, that's it. All right, let's go. All right, baby. Where? Where to? That way. Out, out there? It's as good a place as any. Well, the noise. I'll jam this into one of the flower sacks. We'll kill it. All right, get the lights and let's get out of here. I was surprised how anxious I was to live, even with those two men on the same planet with me. My eyes were pretty used to the dark by the time we were out in the aisle, passing the ginger ale display. You ever break a plate glass window? Well, I did. Leave <laughs> that bottle. Oh, you lie. No, oh, you crazy fool, you hit me. Fred! Fred! Where are you? Where are you? Oh, I'm on no alarm. I'm gonna get you, baby. Get you good. You scared? Scared, are you? Running won't be any good. I'll get you sooner or later before you get out of here. Sooner or later. I've been following.
falling over things all night long. This time it was the other one. And the dead one. Sooner or later, baby! Uh, uh, I didn't see it in the dark on the floor, but I, I, I felt it. His gun! Is that enough for you, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's plenty. Can I go home now? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You don't want to hold her on these charges that homicide was justifiable? Yeah, well, that isn't what worries me. Well, what does? What have I done now? Rudy. What was his last name? Huh? He may still be walking around making free phone calls. Maybe I want to talk to him. You're my lawyer. What do I say to him? Nothing, baby. you said enough. Come on, I'll take you home. Good night. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Miss Agnes Moorhead. This is Harlow Wilcox for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, the men and women of Autolite build over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, boats, and industry. Autolite contributes its manufacturing experience and skills to the fields of transportation, electronics, agriculture, die casting, and plastics. The Autolite name is famous all over the world for products of unsurpassed quality and performance. In service, too, Autolite facilities are worldwide. Wherever you travel, you'll find trained experts prepared to serve you. So, for superior products, always look for the name Autolite. Because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, the true story of an escape to freedom in which it has been necessary to change the names of all the principal participants in order that their survivors, still imprisoned, may live. It's called Listen, Young Lovers. Our stars, Mona Freeman... And Robert Wagner. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Weekend Special Death was written for Suspense by E. Jack Newman. In tonight's story, Anthony Barrett was heard as Tony and Joseph Kearns as Fred. Featured in the cast were High Aberback, Whitfield Connor, Mary Jane Croft, and Barney Phillips. Agnes Moorhead is now appearing in the universal production of The Magnificent Obsession and will start on tour in October in her one-woman show, The Fabulous Redhead. And remember, next week, Mona Freeman and Robert Wagner in Listen, Young Lovers. Buy Autolite Stay Full Batteries, Autolite Original Service Parts, or Autolite Standard or Resistor Type Spark Plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. More than half a million children and adults are afflicted with cerebral palsy. Your dollars will help to cure and prevent this disease. Will you send a contribution tonight to your local affiliate of United Cerebral Palsy? This is the CBS Radio Network.